Well, hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Biblical Financial Freedom. Hallelujah. This is the place where we come to learn what the Bible has to say about finances. Apply, do learn what he says, do it, do it, do it. Remember what I'm saying? Do what God says so we can walk in the freedom financially according to the Bible. So that's why we call this biblical financial freedom. We see what the Bible says so you and I can live a free life financially. Amen. Okay, so look, I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. And uh, we thank you for joining with us. Now, if you're new to the broadcast, we ask you to please have a Bible. This is our great textbook, the Holy Bible. And then have a pen, paper, something to take notes, take these scriptures down, read over, meditate on them. You can go over much as you want. So you can see what God is saying to you so you can walk in the blessing that God has for you in the financial arena. Amen. OK, so we're going to uh, uh, pray, make our daily confession, and then we're going to get into the word. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now in Jesus name, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, for giving us ears to hear. And I thank you, Father, we're not just hearers of the word of God, but doers of the word of God. And then, Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that he's the great teacher. And Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. And I ask you to help me to teach this word with simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of your people. And then, Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. I will be sensitive to the spirit of God. And I will emphasize the things that he wants me to emphasize. And what you illuminate in my spirit to teach, I thank you, Father. And I'll be patient to teach it so people can grab it, grab hold of it, and apply it to their lives to see the results that you promise in your word in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So I thank you, Father for your word and i thank you that the devil is bound and no evil force shall work against us in jesus name amen and amen okay get your bibles out come on wave them in the air like you really care and let's make this confession together you guys ready okay here we go this is my bible i am what it says i am i have what it says i have I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to continue our teaching on prosperity, a curse or a blessing. That's the big question for many people. Is prosperity a curse or is it a blessing? Now, if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, you will see according to the word of God, okay, according to the word of God, we've shown you that in the will of the, according to the Bible, the word of God, okay? God's word is his will. What we've seen from the word of God so far is looking like it's leaning more to the blessed side. Prosperity. Is it a, a curse or a blessing? Okay? So the last time I was with you, hallelujah, this was so good, and I want to go over this again. We want to see, we was talking about what the Bible uh, records, we want to see what the Bible says or defines a fool. Now, over in, I'm not going to turn to all these scriptures, but I'm going to read them to you. We found out in Psalm 14 and 1. Read, you, can, you can write this down. Psalm 14 and 1. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's the fool. Now, I pray that's not you. Let me take some petrol here. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms, in Psalm 14, 1, Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, 
There's no God. So when you hear somebody say there's no God, you know that's a fool speaking. How do we know that? Because God said that. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Now in Proverbs 12 and 15, I'm just giving you the portion, different portions of it. Proverbs 12 and 15 says this. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. <laughs> See, God, God don't leave nothing uncovered or unturned. He says in Proverbs 12 and 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. We found out in Proverbs 18 and 2, it says a fool has no delight in understanding. Man, this is so good. Please write this down. Take these notes so you can go back and look over these scriptures. And because this is not what you want to be. You and I, we don't want to be fools. And God describes to us what a fool is. In Proverbs 24, 7, it says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Now, in Proverbs 28, 26, this is what it says. He that trusteth, or he that trusts in his own heart is a fool. When a man trusts in his own heart, the Bible says you are a fool. And then in, I mean, then in uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 14, it says the fool walked or walketh in darkness. Whoo, hallelujah. See, you and I, we want to avoid the trends of a fool and prosperity will be a blessing to your life. See, you want to avoid all the traits the trends and the traits. You want to avoid the traits of a fool. And then what do we know? Prosperity will be a blessing in your life. See, you don't want none of them traits we just read. I hope you took notes. You don't want to have none of them traits. Because if you do, prosperity will avoid you. If prosperity is handled wisely, okay, I want you to hear me. If prosperity is handled wisely, then it brings pleasure to God. Okay, we saw what it says about a fool, right? Uh, it, it says, a fool has no delight in understanding. And it says, the way of a fool is right in his own eye. But if, if prosperity is handled wisely, then it brings pleasures, it brings pleasures, okay, to God. And remember over there in Proverbs 1 and 32, Proverbs 1 32 says, and the prosperity of fools, okay, shall destroy them. When a fool gets prosperity, it destroys them. But now let's see what the Bible has to say. It says, if prosperity, let's see what the Bible says. If prosperity is handled wisely, then it brings pleasure to God. So let's look at that look at Psalm. 35 and verse 27. Psalm 35. And let's look at verse 27. And this is in the King James. Look what it says in Psalms 35 and 27. It says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Man, that's, that's amazing. What he tells you and I to do, look what he said. Shout for joy. Let See, shout for joy and be glad, okay? Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my right, righteous cause. If you favor the righteous cause of God, then you can shout for joy and be glad. See, shout for joy. Hallelujah. Glory, shout for joy, woohoo, and, and be glad. Why? That Because you favor God, righteous cause. And then it says this, okay? Let the Lord be magnified. What you gonna do? We gonna magnify the Lord. That means make him bigger than every circumstance, every situation. Or oh, I'm gonna just magnify the Lord. Well, I'm gonna keep magnifying the Lord. Why? Because it says, let the Lord be magnified. Why? which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So if God wanted you and I to be poor, 
And if prosperity was a curse, then why would God have pleasure in you being prosperous? It says he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. You know what that word pleasure is? That's to take joy. That's to have a, a, a joyful heart. Be glad. Pleasure. You, 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 you celebrate. See, you have pleasure. You happy. It says overwhelming joy or happiness. You happy. God said, I'm happy in the prosperity of my servant. So if it was God's will and if it was a curse for you and I uh, not to be prosperous or prosperity was a curse, then why would God be happy and pleasurable or, or, or God be happy in the prosperity of his servant? Why would he take pleasure if it was a curse? But it says, no, it says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God's best is for us to spend our entire lives in prosperity. Now, okay, let's, let's go to Job. Look, look at Job. That's close right over here, right there before Psalm. Look at Job, chapter 36. Thank you, Jesus. And look at 11 and 12. This is in the King James. Look at Job. See, chapter 36 and verse 11 and 12. Oh, glory. 36 and look at verse 11 and 12 it says if they obey and serve him talking about God they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures man come on I, I tell if you just read the Bible just read the Bible K-I-S-S -S, keep it simple saints See, I say this a lot and I say it again just because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you need religious, educated religious people to help you to misunderstand the Bible. Okay, look, let's read. That's why we tell you to bring your Bible. Read. Look, this is Job 33, verse 11 and 12. It says, if they obey, it's a condition, if. See, it depends on if you obey or not. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. What? Some days. It said they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. I didn't write that. God did. God used somebody. He used Joe inspired to write that. This man was inspired by God to write that. God rewards. Okay? God rewards the obedient servant with a lifetime of prosperity. That's just what we that's what we just read. God rewards him. God rewards you and I when you obey him with a life of prosperity. As that's just God, that's just God's desire. That's his will. The word of God is the word, this is God's word breathed. See, this is what God's breathed. He breathed in man what he wanted them to write. So you know what I tell people? The Bible is God's thoughts and his desire on print, in print, on paper. The Bible is God's word. That's what he wrote. He wanted man to write so we could have the thoughts of God and tell us what is important to us, learn his ways, what he wanted us to do, how to be blessed, how not to be blessed. See, the easiest way for you not to be blessed is to disobey and not to do what God says. But to stay blessed, you obey God. You please God. And this book is a, is a letter. It's a one big love letter, 66 books, but a love letter of, to God, to you and I. He tells us how to live. He tells us what to do. If you want to walk in prosperity, he tells you what to do. You want to live a long life and have a, a, a satisfying life, God tells you and I what to do. The way you get out of it is to disobey him. But if you do what the word says, Man, it's going to be well with you. It's going to be it's going to be fun. Hallelujah. Now, let's go. I want to get this in the uh I want to do this in the uh passion translation. Let's go to Psalms 115 and verse 14. Go to Psalms 1 5th Psalm Psalm 115 and verses 
uh, 14 and 15. I want to read this in the Passion Translation. 14 and 15. You guys ready? It says this. God himself will fill you with more. Blessings upon blessings. Will he heap? I mean, will be heaped. I like that. Will be heaped upon you and upon your children from the maker of heaven and earth, the very God who made you. Now, in the King James, it says, may the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. But I love this. It says, God himself will fill you with more. Who's going to do? God's going to fill you with more. Blessings upon blessings will be heaped upon you. And this is the good part. And upon your children. See, God's going to heap his blessings upon you and upon your children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, my desires may the Lord give you continual prosperity. God blesses those who walk in his counsel with prosperity. See, God blesses when you and I walk in his counsel, he'll bless you with prosperity. Let's look at Psalms 1. Let's go over here in Psalms, look at chapter 1, and look at verses 1 through 3. Psalm 1, hallelujah. And let's look at verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading this from the King James. It says, bless it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Before we came on, we were just talking about this. See, the word says, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What is the ungodly? The wicked. That's those who deny God. That's those who, who say there is no God or want nothing to do with God. And it ain't no in between. You either for God or you're against God. Those that are against God and oppose God, he calls them the ungodly or the wicked. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, see the man, this is the other person, the man, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his delight, is in the law of the Lord. That word law is the word, the precepts, the concepts of God. Who walketh, who, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, or in God's word, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like, God's going to tell you what you're going to be like. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Man. There is no one, no one in the lives of those who continually seek and honor God. When you look, when you live, okay. In the way that please God, a way where you seek God and honor Him, there's no one. The Bible says there's no one in the lives of those who continually seek and honor God. Okay, uh, where's that at? Let's look at Psalms 34. Go to Psalms 34. Glory be to God. Look at Psalms 34 and verse 9 and 10. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, look at 34, 34. Psalms 34, verse 9 and 10, it says this. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. Now you see this, I, I read it, it's in the Bible. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one. You have something you want? God said there's no one to those to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Man, this is so powerful. This is so good. This is the Bible. This is the word of God. So we see here prosperity. Is it a curse? Okay, a curse or a blessing. We see that prosperity doing it God's way, obeying God, is a blessing. 
Now we saw what is when it's a curse, when you're a fool, when you say there's no God, when you uh, wisdom is too high for a fool, the prosperity of a fool will destroy him, but that's not you and I. We men and women of God that submit to God, uh, believe God, and honor God. And look what the Bible says. Let's read this again. Psalms 34, 9 and 10. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one, no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. All you got to do, do you seek the Lord? Are you really she's seeking and, and, and searching for God, or obeying God? God grants pleasure and prosperity to those who delight themselves in him. And that's over in Psalms 37. Look at Psalms 37 and verse 4. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And what will happen? And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. See, you delight yourself in the Lord. It says God grants pleasure and prosperity to those who delight themselves in him. You know what it is to delight? To delight in God is to delight in his word, is to reverence his word, is to honor his word, is to delight in his way of doing things, his destruct, I mean, his instruction, not destruction, his instruction. See, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall do what? He shall give thee the desires of your heart. When you delight in his word, his way of doing things. See, that's what it is to delight yourself in the Lord. To, okay, I'm de if I say I'm delighting myself in the Lord, I'm obeying him. I'm delighting in the way God wants me to do things. I'm delighting in the way God wants me to pray. I'm delighting in the way he asked me to love and how he asked me to forgive. How to give, how to trust him. You know, not to lean on to my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him. and divide. See, I'm delighting in his way and his way of doing things. And what does the Bible say? And he should give me, give me or you, what? The desires of his heart. But what's, what's the condition that needs to be met? I have to delight myself in the Lord. So I have to delight myself in the Lord. And then he'll give me the desires of my heart. People say the Lord gives me the desires of my heart. Not if you don't, not if you leave that first part out. You have to delight in him first. You have to delight in his word. You have to delight in his way of doing things. See, that's what it is to delight in the Lord. See, if I say I'm in the Lord, that means I'm going to obey what he says, do the way, do things the way he says to do them. Well, I'm delighting in him. And the Bible says he'll give me the desires of my heart. I love this here, and I'm going to finish. This is it. This is the last scripture I'm going to give to this, and then next week we'll start a new teaching, and we'll teach on blessed. Blessed is God's best. Okay? Here with the last scripture. Look at Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Woo! Get your shouting shoes on. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, and look at verse 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? You guys ready? In Deuteronomy 28 and 8, it says this. The Lord shall command. Who's going to do it? The Lord. Now, this is if we hearken diligently unto his voice and keep his commandments. See, when you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord and keep all his commandments, all these blessings shall come on you. And the Bible says, not only shall they come on you, they shall overtake you. That means they'll run you down. They're going to overtake you. To overtake, you could be running as fast as you can the other way and give God gives you a head start, but he's going to come and overtake you. Hallelujah. So look at this in verse 28 and 8. It says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you to on thee and in thy storehouses and in all that thou setteth thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So what's the key? God said, I'm going to command. What does it look like when God commands the blessing on you? Who can stop it? No one. So I'm going to ask you again. Is prosperity, prosperity, a curse or a blessing? From the scripture we gave to you, you should come to a conclusion. Now, I already come to the conclusion. I know it's a, it's a blessing. Prosperity is a blessing of God for you and I. And church, I pray, believers, listen to me, brothers and sisters. I pray that you'll get in this word. You'll meditate on these scriptures we have and just stick with the scripture. Somebody try to speak against it, just show them the Bible. These things are very simple. And like I said, you need religious people to talk you out of this. And this is what happens to many Christians. They see what the word says and then they add but. 
But, but what? See, now you're about to give your opinion or say something that God didn't say. See, that's what it is to delight in God. Delight yourself in the Lord. How do I do that? I delight in his word. I take his word and I believe it. And then I act on it. It took me a while to believe God for prosperity. Why? Because all my life I heard that it was God's will for me to be poor. And God didn't want me to have no money. People made it look like if you had money, it was a curse or it was the will of God. No, God just warned us. He warns you and I. That's another teaching for a different time. You might have to go back and look at some of the other episodes where we taught God told you what's the benefit of the blessing and what is not when you don't treat it right and do it right. We gave you warning. So people that says prosperity preachers, all we talk about is money and we all we make it easy for you to sit. No. See, if you will listen to us, we tell you the good part and the bad part. We give you the warning. There's not really no bad part, but God warns you when you misuse money and you misuse the prosperity for yourself. You know, Lord, bless me and my wife, my two kids and no more. Bless me and us four and no more. See, that's ain't God. God's will was always for you to be a blessing. It was for your will, for all of your needs to be met, and for you to meet the needs of others. See, that's what prosperity is. That's what rich is. People think rich is like a, a dollar amount. No, rich is when you have enough money for all of your needs to be met abundantly. All of your needs to be met abundantly, and you can meet the needs of others abundantly. That's all rich is. That's all it is. And that's what God designed for you and I. And the Bible says the Lord will command. So what happened with the blessing? The blessing. See, the blessing is that covenant that God made with Abraham. God will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. Man, that's good news. I tell you, that's good news. You guys are going to have to come back next week. And I hope you invite a family member, a friend. Remember, hit the like button. Hit the, the subscribe, hit the like, the share, the subscribe. Why? So you can in, in, invite other people. And I'm telling you, if you would do things the way God says when it comes to your finances, and other, man, you'll be blessed. You'll have a life more than you could ever amass. That's what I'm living right now. For what? The blessing of the Lord. See, that's why we call this biblical financial freedom. I tried it the world way, and it kept me in bondage. But when I did it God's way, man, I'm free. Hallelujah. Well, look, I'm out of time. Don't forget to join us next week. And remember this, that God is exalted. Satan is defeated. And Jesus is Lord. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homiettes. We'll see you the next time. God bless you for now. Bye. Hallelujah. <laughs>